Carrie, we're gonna make a fennel salad. Have you ever had fennel? No, I haven't. It tastes like licorice, licorice or something, right? right? Yeah, smell that. Mm. Good, right? Smells like black Sm jelly beans. Smells like je black jelly beans or My licorice. Favorite. Some in, uh, some Italians call it fenouk, and it's raw. I'll taste that. Like mm -hmm. licorice. Yeah. Yeah. You like tomatoes and you like fennel. I see that. It's good. So in order to get that shred, almost that fennel slaw, we start by cutting off the bottom of this, discarding that piece, and then we're gonna start to get this as thin as possible. If it's too thick, the flavor can be overpowering. And right now, we wanna be able to have a very simple vinaigrette, lemon and uh, extra virgin olive oil sort of soak up right into, into the bowl. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. This is a mandolin. You familiar with this? Um, it's my sister. Oh, <laughs> no, sister? or this. this. My sister's name is Mandolin. <laughs> is it really? It's Mandy Lynn, and we always called her Mandolin. Yeah. Okay. I... Wow. <laughs> so I've adjusted this to, for it to be thin, and you're just going to want to push this back and forth and shred it a bit. And just go ahead and give that a try. We've done a lot of prep, but I want to let you do that. Now I see that you have a mandolin here. I do. I'm it's not quite as shiny as okay. yours. Just wondering if that mandolin is something that you want to keep or you want me to throw away. Well, if you let me keep this one. This is the Barbie Dream Kitchen mandolin. <laughs> this is the big boy mandolin. You know what? I get one that I can afford. So we'll move this away and we'll start to load up some uh, different ingredients. The next piece, uh, the next ingredients that we want to work on is um, apples. Apples, pomegranates, uh, both are going to go in the salad. So you have that mm. uh, flavor of licorice mm -hmm. with this crisp green apple and the sweet tart pomegranate. That sounds different. All right. Now we're going to use a lemon and olive oil vinaigrette. So we'll come over mm. here and, <clears throat> but if you put that down for me. All I did with the apples was peel and core it. And so there's lots of ways that people do this. Some people use... Um, uh, vegetable peelers on this. Some people have an apple, an actual apple peeler, which I saw. I just run a sharp chef's knife all around the edge and take off the skin. And just to save time, because I have them done already, I'll do half the apple, cut it in half. And then I don't actually corn in advance. I just chop against the sides and pull the core out this way. And just the way we did before with our tomatoes, we want to take these more oval shapes make them into flat pieces, and now we're going to make a julienne out of it. So a julienne is like a matchstick, right? Mm -hmm. And again, against my finger, we turn that into a julienne, and then I put that in some water with lemon so that it doesn't brown. Oh, right? Cool. So the acidity of the lemon keeps the apple from browning. Yes. Want to give that a try? You want to slice sure. some of this apple? Great. Don't worry if there's a little skin on it. <laughs> skin on the apple on the or apple. your skin? No, no, no. Oh, no. okay. It's my skin is fine. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Like matchsticks and then in the water. Okay, so our second ingredient is done. And next we're going to look at uh, the pomegranate. Take a bowl, fill it with uh, water because you'll find that inside the pomegranate there's the seeds. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to the seeds, there's some white uh, flesh that holds the seeds together. So pomegranates, I cut in half this way. And you'll see those are the seeds we want and you immediately have that, that purple juice that comes out. And so I squeeze the pomegranate oh, cool. into the water and then come back with a little spoon which you're grabbing me. So this gets out most of the seeds and then you just want to come back in and scrape out the rest. And what you'll find is that the seeds will come out but also a lot of white flesh will come out. And in the water, guys if you can get a shot of this, in the water the white flesh will come to the top and the seeds will drop to the bottom. So in order to separate them, you just take your hand, put it in there, and start to grab some of the white, fleshy pieces that come out. And then in the bottom, the seeds stay, and you can pull those out. So I've done that, and I've put them in a larger bowl here. So our, How many we, pomegranates is that? I think we used four in there. Oh. So it's, it's um, a little bit of work, but you get that great sweet tart flavor. <clears throat> so we can start to look to assemble. Uh, now we'll take a bowl. And let's put in, we may make this in batches, given the amount of people we have here, but we'll start by 
loading some fennel right in here. This is a great summer salad because it's very light, it's very clean, crisp, especially with the green apple. It also works really well in the fall. I'm kind of excited to try this. This is this very is good. Different. So let's talk about the, the dressing, which is really simple. <clears throat> so first we've got the fennel. Why don't you start to grab some sticks of apple. Just shake off a little bit of the water with your hand. Uh, water's not gonna hurt it. We just don't wanna dilute the dressing. And go ahead and throw that in there, yep. And let's go ahead and do one more handful. We made them in matchsticks so that they wouldn't, they wouldn't fight the shape of the fennel. So go ahead and toss this, if you would. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna to start to layer in some flavor. So we'll start with some cracked black pepper. And now we're gonna use some kosher salt in here as well. Good for you. And some kosher salt, which will dissolve uh, with the dressing. Those big chunks will break down. And before we put the pomegranate in, the dressing is very simple. We're simply going to use lemon and olive oil, and we're going to taste until we get the right uh, balance. All right, let's do some pomegranates. That's good. Mm -hmm. I put some plates in the freezer, and we put the plates in the freezer because this is a cold salad, and we want to chill the plates in advance so that we've got a cold salad on top of cold plates, sorry. And now we'll toss this, we automatically have color. You'll see that oh, cool. uh, it stains the apples and the fennel a bit, and the seeds will add some texture and crunch and tartness. And we're gonna do some stacking of the plates, or uh, plating of the salad in just a second. Just put a few more pomegranates on mm -hmm. here if you wouldn't mind. Great, a little pomegranate juice adds to the vinaigrette. And we're gonna save those because we're gonna, the extra ones because we're gonna use them for garnish. Mm. So let's get some plates out of the freezer. Once. All right, so <laughs> let's do what we call play restaurant. If you'd grab a paper towel, please. Is this like cafe world? It's signed, kind of, yes. <laughs> if you'd grab a paper towel, we want to make sure that we have clean rims. So when I put it on the plate, we'll try this. <clears throat> The serving on the center of the plate. We may not have to clean the rims. And then we'll take, uh, I don't even think we need these. I think it's gonna do it all by itself. We may just be able to put it on the plate. If the rims got dirty, we would wanna just wipe off the spots. But I think we're gonna be fine. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, cut, we'll finish plating. We'll do another batch, because we're probably gonna need it. Come on up and eat it. You, can do it. you don't have to cut and do whatever you want. I just like to direct while I'm in it at the same time. You act like you've done this before. Give us a stinger. We'll be right back. Okay, you ready for this next piece? I'm ready. We're going to make a risotto, risotto with a, a, a barrio rice. So let's just talk about the ingredients. We're going to do a butter, roasted butternut squash risotto uh, with shrimp. So butternut squash I started before because uh, I like to roast it ahead of time as opposed to cooking it in the pan and add it sort of as the last minute. This way you get to layer the flavors, you get uh, the caramelization that happens in the oven. It allows the rice to cook uh, separately, have some more room in the pan, and uh, gets some nice flavor. We do olive oil, salt, and pepper all on its own, and it gets a nutty flavor to it. But I did want to show you first how to tackle one of these. This is a smaller one. So. Um, Interested in how you go about slicing this up? Mm -hmm. All right, so when you have something this big and, uh, and unwieldy, you wanna... I heard that. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, oh really? shoot. Yeah, uh, people. Everybody it's unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so we're gonna cut this in half so that we can get it to be manageable. Okay. Yep. All right. So <laughs> there's seeds in this. There's seeds in this, but we've got it first before we get to the seeds. We've got to get to the flesh, and before we get to the flesh, we have to take off the outer skin. Okay. So just think about this as sort of shaving down the sides, and you want to rotate it and bring your knife around, and just take as little of the flesh off as possible, trying to outline or trace the back of the skin until 
it's all off. Try not to miss as many times as I did. <laughs> all right. Isn't this like <laughs> offensive to you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't play blue, okay? I, I, <laughs> as you guys know, I have, I'm really offended by all of this. So now this becomes a little bit more manageable, right? Yes. All right. Well, you guys can just go, I'll finish. You just go, go and go, go do your dick humor in the other room. <laughs> so once you have that, you cut this in half and you see the seeds. And you take your spoon and you can start to, or, or nice deep, uh, measuring spoon and you can go in and gut out the seeds, just pull them out and you can start to cut now into the cubes as you see in the finished uh, product. And it's a lot like we uh, did before with a lot of the other produce we were processing. You just want to, of course, get some flat pieces first and then turn them around. Depends how big you want them. The thing that you're going to want to make sure that you're consistent about here is size because size matters. When you're cooking large and wieldy squash, <laughs> you want to make sure that it's, it all cooks evenly. So if mm -hmm. you get little tiny pieces and huge pieces like that, they're going to cook <laughs> fairly unevenly. So mm -hmm. you want to go through and make sure that you have pretty consistent pieces. And then we put them on a roasting pan, add a little bit of olive oil, kosher salt, black pepper, toss it, put it in the oven. And actually, Jacob made these today. Oh. Oh, so now Jacob knows how to do it. All right. OK? That's your first piece we want to have on the side. Before we get the risotto started, though, we also want to put some onion and garlic <laughs> together. <laughs> And oh. first, cut the tip off. This is where most of the... Um, just the tip. Yep, yeah, just taking the tip off. Okay. And this is, in the butt here, <laughs> is where most of the um, tear-producing stuff lives. So we keep that sort of intact. Keep the skin on, take the top off, flip it over, cut it in half, keeping the two butts intact. 